People will come up to me and they go, well, 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 war, that's a man's problem, you know? It's a man's problem. Men are the reason why there's war. It's an issue with testosterone. That's where all this shit comes from. It's a man's problem. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Have you heard of Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> Let's go a little contemporary. Have you heard of Hillary Clinton? <laughs> Let's for a long time. <laughs> I had to think about it though. It's a very good question, right? Are men the only the gender that's responsible for war? And I had to think, you know, I know a lot of powerful women leaders that have been war hungry, right? Queen Elizabeth I waged war and killed 200 Lutherans just because she didn't like the way they were kneeling to God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? She basically looked at these people and said, God didn't have a goatee, slaughter them. Oh! <laughs> Joan of Arc was a badass warrior, right? A warrior so badass that the only way men could get their masculinity back was to call her crazy and have her burned at the stake. <laughs> the only way we could really do it. Yeah. I think, why, why do we say this? Why do we make the argument that only men create war? One of the arguments is that these women that do go, uh, that are war hungry, that do wage these wars, are trying to be leaders in a man's world, right? Which means that if you're a woman leader, that means that, uh, you know, you gotta do some man shit. When uh, you gotta burp at the dinner table, right? Whenever a hot broad walks in, you, you gotta oogle her and go, ah, ooh, God, and then your eyes <laughs> pop out and you start doing this. You drone bomb the village because you care more about the resources they have than the people there. You know, man shit, we gotta do that. <laughs> I think they're all female society that's all about peace. Is there a full matriarchal society that we know of that is all peaceful. Now you think about it, right? I mean, the first one that came to mind is the Amazons. But even they are a bunch of badass female warriors, aren't they? Yeah. The legend of the Amazons goes that they cut off one of their breasts to be better archers. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> Top five! One of the best organs on the human body! <laughs> The balls it takes to do something like that, right? That's incredible because I don't see a bunch of men lopping off one of their testicles to be better at Medal of Honor on the Xbox. <laughs> yeah. So it turns out war doesn't really have a gender. War doesn't care about your religion. War doesn't care about where you came from. War is about two things. It's about dominance and exploitation. That's all it's about. It's about making sure that we can we justify $827.4 billion. We need to justify that budget. So we're going to go to war about it, right? We had to spend that money. But $5 solves every homeless person's problems across the country. It's all it takes.
All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the program. Got some folks tuning in over on the old Rockfins. Hello, Holly. Good to see you. We got some folks watching on Odyssey. Uh, took a, Odyssey took a little bit extra time today uh, to 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 get things kicked off, but um, I'm 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 doing all right. Uh, things are okay. Yesterday was kind of crazy and busy, uh, but that's okay. We I I have a, a a day or two like that every so often. You know, every couple of weeks, I'm like, wow, God, I'm not going to be done till like fucking nine o'clock. <laughs> um, but uh, other than that, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, my cat was acting kind of strange uh, on Monday when we came back from the open mic. Did not want to hang out at all, which is kind of a weird thing for Milo to do. Because uh, I'm pretty sure that cat gets separation anxiety like when I go to the bathroom. And I like because then he just shows up at the door and he's like, what's up? Where'd you go? How come you didn't <laughs> take me? And it's like, you don't want to be in there, man. And then, you know, he takes a whiff and he's like, yeah, I don't want to be in there. But uh, on Monday, he was he was just like real standoffish. Uh, he barely ate his food on Monday, which is not something that he does. Um, usually, like he'll sporadically eat throughout the day. And, uh, uh, he's weird about that. Like he eats at random points of the day, but like we have treat time set up, um, later in the night. We, I, I, if he's, if he's been good, I give him some treats and, uh, we gave him some treats and, and he didn't even want that. So that was kind of weird. So I don't really know what was going on, but, um, he's been particularly like odd about, um, his food, uh, yeah, so we've we've been we I've been talking about well, my my roommate and I've been talking about maybe switching up some of his his dry food a little bit, uh, because he's been eating the same thing for like the last year and a half, and maybe he's just sick of it. Maybe he wants to try something new, and he yeah, and maybe that's why he's not really eating that much anymore. So that's something that's something we have to do. Uh, so yeah, that's just been the little bit of weirdness that's been going on uh with the cat. Today's been pretty nice. I got a new coffee maker. Pretty excited. The sensor in my old coffee maker was uh, was busted, so I got a I got a new one that makes a single cup as well. That's pretty exciting. I'm I'm pretty jazzed about that. Big. I'm a big coffee guy, so I have like a French press. I have a Biatelli uh, espresso, uh, like a stovetop espresso maker, and then I have this you know big thing of big coffee maker thing. So. Uh, pretty pretty pumped about that. Pretty pumped to drink my evening g a cup of coffee, you guys. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty jazzed about it. Uh, it's the little things that get me excited. Uh, but uh, yeah, things are things are uh, on a on a personal level, things are okay. Um, you know, today's a, today was a, a a little bit of a slower day and uh, and a, a kind of a nice slow day to you know to follow up on. Uh, and I thought I was going to do Ron's show today because I normally do it on the last Wednesday of the month. Uh, but there is another Wednesday in June. So I end up having some time to, you know, clean up some stuff in the kitchen and set up this new coffee maker and do all that sort of stuff. So nice, relaxing day. I, I uh, after after a very long one yesterday. Uh, you know, so, and, uh, if, if, uh, if you're looking in, in the comments, I do have, uh, tickets for the virtual show coming up on Friday. Um, and I always say this, if, if you're in a financial bind and can't afford the tickets, please let me know. Uh, and I'm happy to give you uh, a code for a free ticket to come hang out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the worst capitalist in the world. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm, I am trying to earn a living doing uh, this, doing the the live streams, creating content, and doing stand up comedy, and in, in 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 both the live and a a, a, a virtual capacity. But uh, I also understand that you know people are going through a tough time, and if they want to have a have an evening in with something cool, they can do that. Um, and Eleanor Goldfield is going to be kicking things off uh, with some spoken word pieces, and then we're going to talk about uh, what's going on in Palestine. So uh, the links uh, are in each of the comment sections. So, uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, Holly uh, uh, and Cynical Girl is is here as well. Holly says she, uh, she seems to have adjusted to the new schedule. Hell yeah. Fantastic. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. 
Um, glad to see some folks uh, joining in on the old stream. Uh, and you guys know the drill with this is is feel free to leave comments. I encourage you guys to leave comments uh, and and talk to each other. Be respectful to each other. Obviously, I, I, I feel like I don't have to worry too much about uh, you guys being assholes because you guys are all uh, sweet, wonderful, nice people. But I will look at them, look at the comments and, and respond and all that at the end of each segment. Uh, so I don't get lost and trail off and this becomes a six hour live stream where we uh, talked about uh, nothing substantial. <laughs> um, but uh, all right, let's let's dive into let's dive into our, our, our main stories. So it's here, you guys. It's here. I've always wondered how 1984 started, right? Like, uh. I, I haven't read the book in in a, in a in a pretty long time, um, but uh, if if I remember correctly, they they don't particularly go into the details of of how they landed into dystopia. And uh, what's cool about real life is is we get to we get to kind of see that right, like we get to live in creating a fucking authoritarian fascist dystopia in real time how exciting is that we get to live through that you guys we get to live through a bunch of people saying that a crypto fascist is going to bring freedom to everybody oh man what an exciting time to be alive isn't it so uh there's a new there's a new categorization of domestic terror uh that has just been put out so I'm going to share that with you guys. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this uh, on the old Twitter sphere and all that. Cool. Okay, so that that did work. Per, it, that worked pretty well. Okay, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to share the the image, um, and I would have had to do other shit. But here it is. We found it. The image is here. So I'll kind of read what uh, a little bit a little bit of uh, what it says, and we'll go through some of the shit. So it says domestic violence extremists are us-based actors who conduct or threaten activities that are dangerous to human life in violation of criminal laws of the united States or any state appearing to be intended to intimidate or coerce a civilian population and influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion or affect the conduct of the uh, of a government by mass destruction assassination or kidnapping as per the definition of domestic terrorism in uh, U.S. Code 22331, mere advocacy of political or social positions, political activism, use of strong rhetoric, or generalized philosophical embrace of violence tactics may not constitute violence. Philosophical embrace of violence tactics may not constitute violent extremism and may, uh, const uh, may be constitutionally protected. While a majority of DVEs fall into one threat category, some draw upon and, or are inspired by ideological memes found in other threat categories. Okay, so a couple couple of quick things, just by just by the top of this, right? Uh, appearing to be intended to intimidate or coerce a civilian population. That's the cops. Is isn't that just the cops that you just described? American police, because <laughs> that's all they do. They intend to intimidate and they coerce a civilian population. That's the police. <laughs> uh, and influence the policy of a government by intimidation or coercion. That's lobbyists. That's like the Israel lobby does this all the time. <laughs> right? Like that's that's exactly what they'd watch the lobby. Watch the documentary The Lobby. Or better yet, if you want to come to my show, the virtual show on June 25th. Uh, that's that I, I'm going to talk about exactly that thing. Influence of policy of a government by intimidation or coercion. That's what the Israel lobby does. <laughs> or affect the conduct of a government by mass destruction, assassination, or kidnapping as per the de definition of domestic terrorism in U S code two, three, three, one. That's all of the intelligence communities. That's what the intelligence community does last year. <laughs> The U.S. Marshals were doing this when they were kidnapping random people in Portland and various other cities. 
you just described your own government as domestic violent extremists. <laughs> so we have to police the lobbyists, the lobbyists, right? The police, the lobbyists, and the intelligence community all described by each point of this thing. But that is not who they're talking about, friends. That is not who they're talking about. So, uh, what? Who? Who are they talking about? Right? It's. It's. They're. They're clearly not going to incriminate themselves, even though they just described uh, the cops, the lobbyists, and the intelligence community as domestic violent extremists, by definition of the U.S. Code for Domestic Terrorism. So, uh, it says racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, DVEs with ideological agendas derived from bias often related to race or ethnicity held by the actor against others, including uh, a given population. You could just say white supremacists. That could be something that you could just fucking say. You could just say white supremacists. That's not on here. You say, oh, racially and ethnically motivated. Yeah, but you guys don't do anything about it. That's also the cops. <laughs> We've we've established cops are domestic, vi domestic violent extremists twice in this document already. Animal rights slash environmental violent extremists DVEs seeking to end or mitigate perceived cruelty, harm, or exploitation of animals, or perceived exploitation or destruction of natural resources. Uh, and the environment. So the fossil fuel industry, the fossil fuel industry does that. It's not perceived. We have eyes and other senses that help us f very clearly see that our addiction to fossil fuels is destroying the planet. There's no perception. Abortion-related extremists, uh, DVEs with ideological agendas to, in, in support of pro-life or pro-choice beliefs. So let's just, we'll throw, we'll throw both of them in there. But we're not really going to go after the pro-lifers. When the fuck has have pro lifers actually been ever like imprisoned? And, and I I've, I've never seen that happen. They got they're fucking crazy ass posters outside all the time, and they harass a bunch of people. My sister used to get harassed by them a bunch when she used to work uh, at a at a particular uh, uh, research lab connected to a a, a a women's hospital. And she used to get harassed like it's, but they don't do anything to stop them like the cops don't even show up when it's a pro uh pro-life rally which is a very ironically named ideology so this is the this is this is i think the the the, the meat of it right this that which is I, I oddly in the middle uh it says anti-government slash anti-authority violent extremists dbes with ideological agendas derived from an anti-government or anti-authority sentiment include opposition to perceived economic, social, or racial hierarchies, or perceived government overreach, negligence, or Ill Ill illegitimacy. You can't just throw the word perceived in there and ignore the fact that you're actually fucking doing it. It's not perceived. We're fucking living it, assholes. <laughs> Stop saying perceived. It's not perceived. It's factual. You are throwing the word perceived in there so you can just ignore all of it. That's why you're throwing the word perceived in there. Uh, militia violent extremists, DVEs who take overt steps to violently resist or facilitate the uh, overthrow of the U.S. government in support of their beliefs that the U.S. government is purposely exceeding its constitutional authority and is trying to establish a totalitarian regime, uh, oppose many federal and state laws and regulations, particularly those related to firearm ownership. So basically, this is a a thing that says we're going to be a totalitarian regime and we are going to overstep constitutional authority and we are going to try to disarm the populace and y'all just got to be okay with it right it's it's the same thing of like perceived government over no there is government overreach we're, the next segment is going to be about government overreach it's not perceived it just is and when we call it out you can't just be like well that's your point no it's not our point of view it just is that's what you're doing. This is the one that I was just like, oh, here we go. Here we go, thought police. Here's a, this is anarchist violent extremists. DVEs who oppose all forms of capitalism, corporate globalization, and governing institutions which are perceived as harmful to society. It's, again, not perceived. Just cut that fucking word out. <laughs> 
But basically, this is anti-capitalists and socialists. As I say, yeah, these guys are violent extremists now. Go figure the guy that bragged about, quote, beating the socialist just fucking criminalized it. Made it a form of violent extremism. So now they basically did, uh, wrote, wrote a thing that you can't criticize capitalism, no matter how destructive it is. Oh, by the way, that's your perception. That's not what that's not what's actually happening. Really? Then why did why did why does the the most capitalist country of all time have such high levels of poverty? Why why does the, cap, the the greatest capitalist country of all time, America, have so many people being evicted out of their homes, so many people living out in the streets, so many people living paycheck to paycheck on the verge of getting kicked out of their homes? People that can't afford health care, people that are on med, uh, that, uh, that that have medical debt despite the fact that they have health insurance. So the fact that they have three jobs, they're still barely making it. That's not perception. That's reality. Your perception is to ignore this shit. Sovereign citizen violent extremists. DVEs who believe that they're immune from uh, government authority and laws. So politicians. So politicians. And cops. There's three points where we've just enabled cops as do fucking domestic violent extremists. And one thing that points out politicians, one thing that points out lobbyists, one thing that points out fucking fossil fuel industries. But no, let's loop in fucking anti-capitalists that criticize capitalism with valid critiques of capitalism and socialists. Let's put that in there. And then let's encourage people to fucking rat out your socialist friends. <clears throat> all other domestic th uh, terrorism threats. They ran out of categories, so they're just like everybody else then. DVEs with ideological agendas that are not otherwise defined uh, under one or <laughs> one of the other domestic terrorism threat categories, including a combination of personal grievances and beliefs with potential bias related to religion, gender, or sexual orientation. Again, they're just ignoring it. So it's, it's basically like anybody that calls out racism and, 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 and discrimination in this country might be a, a potential domestic violence extremist. And, um, and this is this is a false um, way of presenting America as somebody that a country that champions human rights. When historically they've never championed human rights. This is a country that has blatantly violated human rights nonstop for the pay, sake of profits. Nonstop. That's what this country is fucking built on. And this this document right here, this recategorization of domestic violent extremists is basically America coming out and saying, hey, we're going to ignore all our history and then we're going to write this law and make this the 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 new fucking, you know, uh, the, the 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 new norm, the new narrative that we're throwing out there that everybody has to adhere to. And you, you, you can believe in this and this and this. Oh, by the way, we're also the country of freedom. But you have to believe in this, this, and this. And if you believe in anything outside of that, you're a domestic violent extremist. You're, quote, a DBE. This is authoritarianism. This is fascism. This is a constitutional violation. Because you can't tell people that they can't hold certain beliefs. And you're categorizing them as violent. Dude, most of the socialists and communists that I know, and, and I'm, I'm sure you guys watch a bunch of the socialists and communists that I know as well, don't call for a violent revolution. We know that that's probably what's going to happen because the state, the government, the United States government is going to thrust violence upon us using measures like what we're looking at on the screen right now. And then when we defend ourselves, they go, oh, look how violent. No, we're defending ourselves, assholes. You guys are the ones that, st that instigated the violence. Oh, but it gets better, folks. Oh, but it gets better. Uh, the Intercept just reported that uh, they are teaching um, Navy... Um, what's the, what's the, what's the word here? 
I'm going to look at the way that they phrase it. It's a training document, a Navy counterterrorism training document. Yeah, so so there's people that are being trained in the Navy for counterterrorism has equated socialism and anarchists with neo-Nazis. So now people in the Navy that are being trained to combat terrorism, domestic or otherwise, are basically going to come after socialists and equate them with neo-Nazis, which is nowhere near the fucking same thing. Because I'm not like, hey, you know what? I think the worker should seize the means of production to be paid the uh, a, 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 a living wage, if not more, because life is not just about paying your bills. It's 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 about being able to enjoy uh, what 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 this world has to offer. Uh, I think health care should be a human right and everybody should just be granted health care. I think capitalism is a toxic economic system. Oh, that guy's basically a neo-Nazi. Nowhere in that have I tried to fucking shave my head and carve a swastika into my skull. Nowhere. You know what's funny about socialism? is Well, this is not the funny. This is, this is the thing about socialism. Socialism is about equality. It's about creating a fair life for everybody, right? And helping you achieve what you want to achieve in life. That's what that that's what that system and way of life is about. It's for everybody. And neo-Nazism is about a very specific group of people being up at the top, being able to enjoy the fruits of life, and everybody else has to be in servitude to those groups of people. They're they are without a doubt completely opposite fucking ideologies. And they'll believe it. They'll believe it. There's gonna and there's gonna be a crop of fucking uh, you know Navy counterterrorism kids that eventually are gonna become retirees of this program and are gonna come out and realize all the atrocities that America has committed using them as a way to fucking do it, and you're gonna create a whole new wave of disillusioned veterans. So here, I, I, want, I want to show you guys that too. So let's, let me share the screen here. So here's the, here's the, the sheet, the training guide. There's a couple questions, right? So question number one is, uh, which of the basic ter uh, terrorist organizational structures is categorized by uh, distributed authority, redundant key functions, and a cell structure that allows... Uh, anonymity of individuals operating throughout the organ organizational spectrum. Oh, it's the CIA. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure that's what you got. Uh, question two. Difficult to identify and presenting a formidable challenge to law enforcement and intelligence agencies, this type of terrorist shares ideology and goals with a terrorist organization but does not communicate with any of them as he fashions his political aims and commits act of terrorism. I don't know if that's a question or just like a statement that's being made about whoever he is in this notion. So here, here's the uh, anarchists, socialists, and neo-Nazis represent which terrorist ideological category? I don't know because the first two have nothing to do with the last one, and the first two aren't really a terrorist organization. Those are, I, those are, those are philosophies and ways of life. Those are economic philosophies and ways of life that are more about equality and fairness than they are about terrorism. Blank are typically individuals or groups that are sympathetic to the announced goals and intentions of terrorist organizations, but are not committed to take enough action. Oh, it's the Democrats. The Democrats are typically individuals or groups that are sympathetic to the announced goals and intentions of the terrorist organization, but are not committed to take enough action. It's the Democrats. I mean, hell, we have a white supremacist president. That's what Joe Biden is. Let's let's be honest about who he is. Build Back Better is just blue MAGA. <laughs> That's all it is. It's the same shit. It's the same philosophy. It's the same concept. It's just different words. Joe Biden is a white, he's sided with segregationists. He has, he has been anti-black this entire time. He wants to fund the police to beat the shit out of black people even more. He wants to give them more money. For what? 
Train them with what you have. They have an astronomical amount of money. And I have people telling me if we defund the police, people are just going to be getting robbed and raped on the streets. And it's like, that's not... I live in a community that I, you know, I, I know so I brought this up before and I know some folks in the comments have um, have addressed this uh, as, as well. Uh, but I see, uh, you know, my police department in my neighborhood once, maybe twice a week. Uh, I go for walks. I go to the store. I go, you know, now I'll be going to an open mic at least once a week. I'll be walking home at 1130 and I don't feel nervous about doing that. And I don't see a police presence and I don't think they're getting billions of dollars either because it's a small community with a small police force. Now, when I go into the city, I feel less safe because of the cops. Because there's a cop on every block. And they're just waiting for some shit to go down. And looking the way that I do. And dressing the way that I dress. They don't like me. So I don't feel safe with cops around. I feel safe with the fucking weirdos that walk around the street. Because I know if something goes down, those weirdos are going to come help. I don't think the cops will. Or if they do, if the whoever's if I'm getting attacked or mugged is white, then they're not. I'm a bearded brown dude. Their fucking head says I'm the fucking perpetrator. Yeah, I, this is this is something that uh, rapper Awkward has uh, posted about Joe jo, old Joey B's. Uh, so let's share that. This is again, I did a whole video about him talking down to um, black civil rights activists. And I guess this just resurfaced. So whoever this talking head is was like, whoa. It's like, yeah, man, I already a bunch of us co fucking covered it. it and it, it's it's a hard fucking watch. See, what wait, the this mainstream is... media appears to be suppressing. Maybe because it sounds about as racist as it gets from Joe Biden. This country is doomed. It is doomed, not just because of African-Americans, but because <laughs> this country is doomed, not just because of African-Americans. Although black people sure are doomed in this country. Boy, we really need a white suprem uh, white. You get it. <laughs> what? By 2040, this country is going to be minority white European. You hear me? Minority white European. Does it sound like he's warning people about that? Right? He's warning people. It's going to be minority. We're going to be in the minority. We got to stop the blacks and the browns from fucking our women. How can we? We got to stop them from doing it. If they're, if they're be, I, I've heard, I've heard the black spunk. Can, can travel miles and miles. Why is he so mad about that? He sounds so fucking angry about that. And this is after 45 minutes. Everybody's talked and presented their arguments and presented like, hey, this is what we need and this is how you can help the black community and and uh, what we can do to go tell the, the black community that you're going to be on our side. And and his response to that is, yeah, we got to stop black people and white people from fucking because white people are going to be the minority. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? But this gets ignored by liberals. This gets ignored by Democrats. OK, let's keep going. Sorry. It's just such an insane fucking clip. And you guys are going to have to start working more with Hispanics. Oh, no, not Hispanics. Whoa. What? Who gives a shit? Guess what? Most of them probably work with Hispanics and are fine with it. And you know what they don't point out? Boy, howdy, I'm working with Hispanics. The more you call out that you're working with an ethnic group, the more racist you also sound. <laughs> Who make up a larger portion of the population than y'all do. Oh, no. Now, folks, what in the world does that mean? Clip the main.
It means Joe Biden is a fucking racist and has been and always will be. That's why he's not ending the war on drugs. What he's trying to prevent is um, is the rise of another uh, Black Panther organization, is the rise of another uh, you know civil rights movement, is the rise of another Black Lives Matter movement. We just fought fascism with, with more fascism. That's all you replaced it with. Remember how all of us were saying that that's what's going to happen with the Biden administration? Pay attention. Be, pay attention to those details because it's all in that. There it is. That's from November. I broke that shit down. There's like It's like a two-hour live stream that I did, breaking all that down. Uh, I don't know if it's on Rockfin. I think it's on Rockfin, but... Uh, I know it's on YouTube. He he blatantly came out and said it. He's really mad about the fact that white people are going to be a minority by 2040. Are we bringing back sterilization programs too so that white people can stay the dominant in this country, Joe? Is that where you're headed? Because this is straight up fucking 1917 shit. This is the Espionage Act. The Espionage Act criminalized socialists in this country. That's why Eugene Debs, who was who was a, 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 a union leader, uh, created the American Railway Union uh, and the front runner for the, uh, the the Socialist Party of America, was in prison. Also for saying anti-war shit. That's the other thing. Socialists are vehemently anti-war. So now you can't criticize the military because if you do, you're a socialist and you and and. We have to rat you out and send you to prison. Probably a deprogramming camp of some sort. Part of this is the fact that they have to admit that white supremacy is bad. Because, because it is. <laughs> but it took them like forever to be like, yeah, it's bad. But they want it. So they're like, all right, what else can we do to kind of fuck with it? Well, we'll throw socialists in there and we'll throw communists back in there and we'll throw anybody that wants to be critical of capitalism in there, too. And we'll equate them all as white supremacists. It's the same thing what Israel did, right? Using a lobby. Changed the definition of anti-Semitism. No, it's more about criticizing Israel than it is about hating Jewish people. According to that, I mean, you know, Hitler, not an anti-Semite. He never criticized Israel because Israel never existed. According to the State Department's definitions. That's where we are. You're, you're controlling ideology. You're controlling what, how people get to think, what decisions they get to make. This is thought police shit. And guess what? It's coming under a Democratic administration, not a Republican one. And guess what? A lot of us kept fucking warning you, warning the liberals about this. And I would wager to bet, I don't want to be this fucking cynical and pessimistic, but I would wager to bet it, 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 in, in real terms that the Democrats are going to ignore this, just like they ignored the fact that he screamed for 22 minutes at black civil rights activists. They ignored it. They didn't give a shit. They didn't say anything about it. And that's because we elected a fucking white supremacist into office. And you're surprised when he does white supremacist shit. You're surprised. We, we elected a, another fascist into office. We replaced fascism with more fascism. What do you think is going to happen? Let's look at your comments. ba 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 da ba da ba 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 da ba ba da ba all right, I gotta fly. I, there, there's there's a lot of love happening in the comments for a second, and then we get into this is horrifying from Holly. <laughs> uh, Biden is Big Brother. Yeah, he's he's turning into Big Brother. He's the mouthpiece for Big Brother. Um, yeah. And Holly says working three jobs ain't that uh, ain't that America. Yeah, it's very uniquely American. 
Uh, Holly says, we will not comply. Absolutely. We should not comply with this. The MOVE organization, uh, who was bombed by the Philadelphia Police Department for being black environmentalists, um, said, uh, you know, just because a law is a law doesn't make it right. This is not right. And if anybody that abides by this law, uh, you're a bootlicking traitor and you don't believe in the American Constitution. And you're, you're like your body. You're, you're you are basically just replacing one fascist strongman with another. Uh, cynical girl says, I thought there was more context to that, and they had uh, disproven this version uh, of of uh, of the of the video clip. Uh, Holly says, I feel a lot less safe feel seeing cops. He so he's very condescending. Uh, also says, yeah. Holly points out the phrase, "I don't want I don't want my kids to grow up in a racial jungle." That was something that he, yeah. Again, a lot of people just really ignored that, um, ignored the fact that he said, "I don't want my kids to grow." But here's the thing: is he has said so much crazy shit. That and and none of it he has apologized for. He's just like, hey, I that that was so long ago. Sure, I still hold those beliefs, but fuck fuck you. Fuck you for calling me out on it. That's his attitude towards it. Cynical girl says elected is such a sketchy term. I know American elections are uh a dumpster fire, but uh you know. For, for the sake of the argument, we'll say that. Uh, <laughs> but, but you know, it's it's ridiculous. He he has been put into power. I mean, most most countries that are that that have a, a democracy of some sort don't have the electoral college. They still have uh, one person, one vote, whereas in America, it's one person, one vote kind of sort of until we get to the electoral college. Which is an insane system. Um, yeah, the unedited version is equally as cringe. Uh, oh, of the, of that. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a very, it's, it's fine up till the last 22 minutes. I mean, what, what everybody points out is important details that this administration should have taken to heart, but he just spends 22 minutes calling a bunch of black civil rights activists assholes for calling him out. It's it's genuinely the, one of the worst fucking things I've ever seen. And liberals and Democrats fucking ignored it. Kind of nuts. All right. Uh, I want to talk about this because this is this is this is uh, pretty crazy. I know I know a lot of commentators are going to be uh, addressing this. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and 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 just get to it here. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen this pop up on Twitter. Bam! This is from Press TV. PressTV.com has been seized by the United States government in accordance with seizure warrant issued pursuant to. USC 981, 982, and 50 USC 1701 to 1705 as part of a law enforcement action by the Bureau of Industry and Security, Office of Export Enforcement, and Federal Bureau of Investigation. So the FBI and the State and the Justice Department uh, have uh, seized Press TV along with various other, um, it's primarily Islamic news organizations. Lefty, anti-imperialist, anti-capitalist news organizations. This is a statement from Press TV. It says, what it, in what seems to be a coordinated action, a similar message appears on the websites of Iranian and regional television networks that claims the domains of websites have been seized by the United States government. Oh, that's so weird. I thought, I thought, I thought when Joe Biden came in, like we're, we were going to get more press freedom in this country, but oh, this is so weird. Like we have like less now. 
Julian Assange is still in prison. Biden's going to try to extradite him anyway, even though uh, the, the 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 judge said that he shouldn't be because he might commit suicide in an American prison because American prisons are such dumpster fires of human rights violations that he might kill himself. That's so weird. I thought I thought we were supposed to get more press freedom. Are Democrats tired of fucking being wrong yet? And I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm really not. But for fuck's sake. Like my friends that vote for the Democratic Party because they believe that it is the party of good. Are you tired of being wrong yet? I'm genuinely fucking asking. Because at every turn, every turn, you guys are proved wrong about your party. This is not happening because of Trump. This is happening because of Biden. This is happening because the CIA has been trying to take down Iran for a very long time because they they failed. They weren't able to keep Iran as a puppet regime. Like, what is it going to take for these people to abandon this party? I really don't know. I really don't know. And it's 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 if infuriating. It's infuriating. Because they give me this argument as if, you know, voting for Democrats has saved my life. They just seized pretty much anything that's Arab and Islamic state media. They just took it. So what are they? So basically, this is this is the United States saying, "Hey, we don't really give a shit about the First Amendment. We, we, freedom of press is just sort of a thing we say; it's not a thing we do." Okay. I mean, we're gonna like yell at other countries that don't have a like total freedom of press, but like neither do we, and we really don't. If we did, the gray zone wouldn't be getting shut down. Richard Medhurst wouldn't be uh, getting his uh, PayPal and Venmo locked in, locked. Press TV would still fucking have their website. Now, they, they still exist they, under the domain of uh, PressTV.ir, which I think is like an uh, uh, Iranian designation. So I think that's what they want, uh, probably for e easier for tracking, easier to block the sites if need be. Um within the United States, you can block a particular domain, I'm sure. So where does it stop? Is RT going to be blocked next? Is AJ Plus going to be blocked next? Hell, your, your, your best friend in the Middle East, Israel, blew up their fucking headquarters a couple weeks ago. And you yelled at, you, you, you didn't say a dick all about that. You just yelled at AP reporters. For being pro-Palestinian. This is proof. That. The America doesn't. Uh, the America doesn't really believe in free press. They, they believe in. Uh, a propagandistic fascist state. That has state sponsored media. That tells you what to believe in. That's what CNN, MSNBC and Fox News are. That's what NPR is. That's what PBS is. It is state-sponsored propaganda that tells you what you should believe in. And what you need to believe in is the almighty dollar, is that capitalism is the greatest thing, and anything outside of that is evil. Now, this is done under the guise of, what is it, uh, Declaration of National Emergency and claiming that it, this is an unusual or extraordinary threat. Well, that's strange. Why would a independent lefty um, Iranian state news organization be considered a unusual and extreme threat? Perhaps it has something to do with the very recent Iranian uh, uh, Iranian elections. Richard Medhurst uh, on on uh, press TV has. Uh, covered it on his show, Communique, 
uh, I got to I got to watch it. He does a, a nice brief history and then talks to a a, a great guest from the University of Tehran. But uh, I know some of you guys are going, wait a minute, Chris, Iran elections, elections are for democracies. Oh, but we've been told Iran is a theocratic dictatorship ruled by extreme Islamist philosophies that are against the freedom of the world. I thought Israel was the only democracy in the Middle East. Oh, but that's right. Certain people in Israel aren't allowed to vote or their votes don't count because they're not they're not Jewish. Oh yeah. I forgot. Because Israel's not a democracy. It's a the it's a theocratic dictatorship that likes to play democracy. So that people don't realize that they're actually in a theocratic dictatorship. It's like America. This is a crypto fascist state. But because every four years, well, every two years in some instances, we go check a box and we feel like our civic duty is done. So Iran had an election. They had seven candidates uh, to choose from instead of two. And the guy that won is um, is is is. They, well, so the Western media calls him a hardliner, but uh, he's that just means he's conservative. Most of Israel's prime ministers have been conservative. We haven't seen a progressive Israeli prime minister. But if he's Iranian, uh oh, that's the wrong kind of brown. That's not the approved kind of brown. So the president-elect basically came out and said, hey, the United States needs to lift the uh, sanctions imposed by the Trump administration. Um, and we're willing to sit down and talk to you about the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, now, Biden has come out and said the only way that they will remove sanctions is if uh, if they rejoin the nuclear deal, which Trump is responsible for. So, again, it's like, why is Iran being punished for something Trump did? It doesn't make any fucking sense. And if I made that statement on press TV, it, the United States government would be like, oh, it's unusual and extreme threats. To call out United States hypocrisy the lunacy and idiocy of their fucking decisions. So he makes a statement, right? Which to me, it's like, if you want to be the president that's anti-Trump, you would just lift those sanctions during a pandemic. Why do you need economic sanctions on a country during a fucking pandemic? You are, you are willingly causing people to suffer in that country for no reason other than to, you know, jerk your own dick off and make people watch because it's a power thing. Yes, I'm saying our government is a political version of Louis C.K. But here's the problem. Uh, Joe Biden has been very hesitant about meeting with Iran. The, the, the previous president tried and he was very hesitant. He didn't want to, uh, you know, meet with them and all that. So now this new guy's like, yeah, we're, we're cool, but I'm not ready to talk to you. But you should lift those fucking sanctions, dog, because we'll join it. But you fucked up. You could have lifted the sanctions at any point. The last president wanted to have a meeting and you were hesitant about meeting him. So now why would I just bend the knee to the American state? We have all the cards. You want us to join the nuclear deal? Great. Lift those sanctions. Oh, no? Then I'm not meeting with you. Again, I'm going to point out where the fuck does America get off dictating what other countries can do with their nuclear armaments when we, America is the only fucking country that's ever, ever fucking dropped a nuclear weapon. 
nuclear bomb on a country. Where do they get off on that shit? Why are you the arbiters of nuclear proliferation? Why do you get to determine what other countries can and can't do? Nobody really has an answer to that. I mean, I, I sure shit don't, other than you, you need to be in control. And, you know, you want to be a, a global imperialist dictator country. So now they seize press CB and various other Iranian state news organizations. But still, we're the champions of democracy. Boy, it's funny. I just don't remember the last democracy seizing people's press, seizing people's media outlets. But gee willikers, I don't remember a democracy doing that before. But hey, we're redefining things. We're going to redefine anti-Semitism, domestic violence extremists. Hey, let's just redefine media. Let's just redefine journalism to fit into, into the, the paradigms of the U.S. imperial fascist state. That's where we're headed. What gives America the fucking right to say what another country can do with their press And you violated your own constitution by doing that. You're champions of free press, but you're not going to allow another country to have it. When you really look into history, when you really start paying attention, you realize that everything that America says it stands for, it doesn't. It's a country built on lies. And all those lies are starting to get exposed because you can bury the lie. But eventually, it'll rain, there'll, there'll be a landslide, and boom, all your fucking lies come out. That's where we're at with this shit. Let me look at your comments. I gotta find them, sorry. Cynical girl says revolution, baby. <laughs> uh, Holly, this is a quote. Don't be disappointed. Is that something that he said? Is that something that Joe Biden said? Don't be disappointed. Uh, climate rebel. Good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, says, what's it going to take for people to abandon parties? I don't know. Uh, that's a great question. It's a question that I've been asking myself for a long time. Uh, and I don't particularly have an answer for it. Uh, it points out Israel took lessons from the U.S. On, on, a, on a fake democracy. Yeah, you just say that you're a democracy and then do uh, what authoritarian fascist governments do. You know, you criminalize points of view, ideologies. Anybody that criticizes you, you can't. I mean, Thomas Jefferson basically said there should be a revolution in this country every 20 years. Every 20 years, we should be evolving what, what this country stands for. And they're like, nah, we're just going to criminalize dissent. Uh, Holly says, Richie was furious. Yeah, I, I pulled up the video. I haven't yet. Uh, one of the most emotional rants I've seen from him. Yeah, that's that's saying a lot, Climate Rebel. I, it, yeah, because uh, Richard gets, <laughs> get, he gets emotional. He, he's very passionate, and I love it because you can feel that fire from him. That's, that's why I like... Um, you know, I, I like watching him because you can tell that it's not I there are certain pundits like that you can tell it's fake. It's like this put on anger, like this performative anger. Uh, and with him, it's not you can you can very much tell that that he's not. Um, but, but, but cynical growth says they redefined democracy like they rebranded human rights dissent as being violent extremists. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly what they did it's pretty much where uh where we're at uh da, 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 da. 
uh, over on the old Odyssey in the name of freedom, human rights and democracy. Everything is allowed, especially when they make countries into regimes. <laughs> Captain Foreskin says fascism is healthy. I hope you. I hope that's a a, a, a sarcastic statement there, uh, because it is not. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap things up here. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm getting comments on, uh, in a particular Facebook group. I'm not going to be able to see my phone's like g b blinking up, uh, cause I'm seeing some folks leave a comment on the, on a, on a Facebook group thread. Uh, so I'll respond to that later, but, uh, we, we are going to wrap things up here. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and, uh, listening to me yell at you guys for like an hour. Uh, that's very nice of you guys to let me do. Uh, so if you guys enjoyed this content, if you think this is important, if this, what we're talking about is something that more people need to see, please make sure you are subscribed to our page, but make sure that you 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 hit the like button and share this out with as many people as you possibly can. Um, independent media depends on its audience, depends on the people that watch it to share this out, because if you pay attention to what youtube and facebook are doing they are censoring the shit out of content like this so uh we very much depend on you guys uh or you could do the 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 really cool fucking thing and uh head on over to rockfin or odyssey uh, i'm at rockfin.com slash trish mohan haha and on odyssey if you look up at trish mohan haha you'll find me there as well uh rockfin has something cool where you can uh you can become a premium member for 10 bucks a month and you get the premium content of every single uh content creator on rockfin so that's a pretty cool thing you can endorse my channel which helps my channel out a little bit it helps and then it helps everybody else out as well uh but if uh if if you're not uh, big on the whole rockfin thing and you know you're like oh chris I, I pay attention to you i'm not really a big youtube person that's okay uh you can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member over on my website at chrismohanhaha.com slash donate that's k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n-h-a-h-a.com slash donate uh sustaining members get an email once a month with all of their bonus goodies which includes uh bonus stand-up comedy content um uh behind the scenes uh, uh discussions after uh, post-show discussions from the virtual shows and a bunch of other bonus stuff as well um but if you can't donate that's a hundred percent okay a lot of my stuff is available for free uh, so, uh, uh, but if you miss a video, if you, if you miss a podcast or something like that, uh, I send out an email once a month so you can join my email list at krishmohanhaha.substack.com. Uh, it's a free email list. And if you want, you can become a sustaining member on the email list as well. Uh, but that gives you a list of all the videos and podcasts that I put out throughout the week. Sometimes I write essays. You can find tickets to virtual and live shows there. Uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's, those are two ways that you can keep up with what I'm doing and, and kind of fight the censorship that I, uh, face quite often. Uh, so yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, wrap things up, uh, here, uh, <laughs> girl says I'm adorable when I'm, uh, when I'm yelling at you guys, not what I'm going for, but thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, I'll be back on Monday. Be back on Monday with a new stream. I've got a new Taboo Table Talk coming out tomorrow and on Friday. Two interviews coming up. Uh, the virtual show happens on Friday as well, and Eleanor Goldfield is going to be a part of that, so you're not going to want to miss that. Uh, but till then, uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your week, a fantastic weekend, um, and you know, try to keep paying attention to this stuff. Uh, if something crazy happens and I need to do a stream or put up a video, then you'll you guys will you guys will fucking see it. Uh, but you guys are awesome. Uh, thank you guys for commenting. Holly, Climate Rebel, Cynical Girl, over on the Rockfin, over on Odyssey, uh, Dragon of <laughs> Captain Foreskin, and Tube You. Thank you for leaving comments and hanging out. Uh, you guys are uh, fantastic. But till next week, we'll see you on the road.